In this video, I'll show you how to sell FOSS like a pro with Doku, Headsnare and Cloudflare. So the first step is to choose your machine's location and the operating system. In my case, I picked the Nuremberg location from EU Central because that's the closest to my location. And I'm also picking the Debian for the operating system because of the unattended upgrades. What that means is that it keeps your machine up to date with the latest security updates automatically. So the next step involves choosing your machine type. I suggest starting with a cheap and modest VPS and upgrade later if you need to. So let's use the shared vCPU and the architecture x86 Intel AMD. Since I want to sell FOSS multiple apps on my VPS, I'm gonna choose the C px21 which gives you three vcpus 4 gigabytes of ram and 80 gigabytes of storage for the networking part we leave the default selections because we'll come back to it also avoid disabling ipv4 if you don't want to run into issues with websites that don't support ipv6 yet now it's time to configure the ssh key for your server using an ssh key instead of credentials to log into your server is highly advisable since it's more secure. To generate a new SSH key, you have to run this command and then add your email address. Once you run the command, it will prompt you to specify the file in which to save the SSH keys. Using the default file, id slash ed25519 will override the previous content and you may run into trouble with SSH authentication for other clients. To avoid the troubles, I prefer to save my keys in different files as follows. After specifying the file in which to save the key, you are prompted to enter a passphrase. Although you can continue without providing one, it's highly recommended to provide one. Once you add the passphrase, the SSH setup is complete and the next step is to add the SSH keys to your Hetzner VPS. First of all, copy it and then return to the Hetzner dashboard and click on the add SSH key. Paste your public key here. And as you can see, it automatically added my email address, but you can pick like a name for your machine or something like that, like MacBook personal. And then click add SSH key. Now there are some sections left like volumes, firewalls, backups, placement groups, and so on. Leave them untouched because we'll configure them later. All you have to do now is to click the create and buy button. As you can see, the server is created so you can copy the IP and you can SSH into your VPS. So let's do just that. And it will ask you if you want to continue connecting, say yes. And then you have to add the passphrase, the one you set up earlier. So let's provide that. And as you can see, we are inside the VPS. However, having to provide the SSH key every time you want to access your VPS is kind of annoying. To avoid that, you can add your key to the SSH agent as follows. Provide the passphrase and you are done. Now you can SSH into your VPS without having to provide the SSH key as follows. As you can see, it worked. Now it's time to install and configure Doku, which will allow us to sell FOST apps on our Hetzner VPS. The first step is to get the latest updates and packages for your operating system. To install Doku, we have to run two commands. First of all, we have to get the bootstrap sh file. And then we need to run the bash script. Now that the installation finished, it's important to copy the SSH keys to Doku admin so you can push from your local machine. The next step is to configure Doku and you can start by setting up a global domain, which is a domain that will be used by all of your deployed apps. So for example, if your global domain is catalins.tech and you deploy an app named Expense Tracker, the deployed app will be on expensetracker.catalins.tech. The global domain is handy when you want to host multiple applications under the same domain. 
However, if you only want to self-host one application, you don't need to set up a global domain. For this video, I'll add a global domain for Doku to see how it works. You can set up a global domain as follows. Now the next step is to go wherever your domain is and add an A record that points to your VPS IP address. Also it's important to set the proxy status to proxy because that proxies your traffic through Cloudflare which provides benefits such as protecting your websites from DDoS attacks and caching and optimizing the requests to your server. It's also very important to create a second A record with a star symbol in the name field. And what this A record does is to allow you to deploy apps on subdomains on the global domain you set on Doku. For example, learn.catalinpit.com. Otherwise, you won't be able to deploy apps on subdomains. The next step involves making port 80 only accessible by Cloudflare. This makes your VPS more secure since only Cloudflare can access port 80 which is the port used by Doku. To do so you have to navigate to the firewall section on your VPS. Then click the create firewall button. Cloudflare shows all of their IPs on this page so all you have to do is to copy and paste them. And before adding the IPs, make sure they are applied to your server. So you can go to this section and then check your server. As you can see, is the correct server. And then press create firewall. To be able to set up and use HTTPS with Let's Encrypt, we need to do the same thing for port 443. As you can see, now only Cloudflare can access the VPS through port 80 and 443. You can take it a step further and also add an inbound rule for port 22, which is for SSH connections. For example, you could add your machine's IP so you can SSH into your VPS only from that IP. All other IPs will be rejected. Or even better, you can change the port 22 which is the default for SSH connections and also add your IP as the only authorized IP to SSH into your VPS. Your VPS is in good shape now so it's time to deploy your first app on Doku. SSH into your VPS and run the following command to create an application. This app requires a PostgreSQL database which you can self-host on Doku as well. Doku has a plugin for it which you can install as follows. Once the installation is finished, you can create a Postgres database similar to how you created the application. As you can see the database creation is successful because you can see the connection URI and stuff like that. This command automatically links your database to your application. So far you have an empty application and a Postgres database. However, you didn't deploy anything yet. This is where the deployment part comes in. The next step is to navigate to your application directory on your local machine and add a git remote for Doku with the following command. This represents the IP of your VPS and this is the name of the application created previously on Doku. It's important to mention that your pushes and deployments will fail if the remote username isn't Doku. But now you are done. You can deploy your app with the following command. And as you can see the deployment fails because the application requires environment variables which we didn't set. So now I'll show you how to do that. You can set multiple environment variables on Doku using the config set command. As you can see it takes the app name as an argument and then the environment variables. Obviously I'm not going to show you my environment variables so I'll put a pause here, run the command and show you the output. 
Once you run the config set command, Doku restarts your application automatically. If you want to avoid that, you can use the no restart flag. However, I think you want that because you want your application to run after setting the environment variables, for example. Since we set up a global domain earlier, the application was deployed on the learn subdomain. Even though the application is deployed, it still isn't accessible. And the problem with that is that when you deploy your apps with custom ports, Doku doesn't automatically create and map the ports. You can fix that by mapping the port from your VPS to a port inside your Docker container for the application as follows. What this command does is to set up a rule so that all the incoming HTTP requests to your server's port 80 are forwarded to port 999 inside the learn container. In short, it makes your app accessible over the internet. All right, so far your application is only accessible via HTTP. We need to set up HTTPS. Let's Encrypt offers free SSL certificates, so we'll use it to set up the HTTPS for your app. Once again, Doku provides a plugin for that, so you can install the Let's Encrypt plugin as follows. Then you need to set up the email address where you want to receive updates and notifications from Let's Encrypt. Now the last step is to enable Let's Encrypt for the newly deployed app. Now that the command finished, all that's left is to set up auto renewal for the certificate. This command keeps up your certificate up to date by setting up a cron job that renews it automatically. The application is now accessible via HTTPS. Also, since we are using Cloudflare, HTTP should also automatically redirect to HTTPS. So let's try it. And as you can see, it automatically redirected to HTTPS. The last thing we'll do is to set up automatic deployments via GitHub Actions. GitHub Actions will automatically deploy your app on Doku whenever you push to the main branch. Create the .github folder, then the workflows folder inside, and lastly the deploy.yaml file and then add the following code. The branch property under width allows you to specify a custom deploy branch other than master. Additionally, you can change the default deploy branch with this docu commands. The learn represents the application name and main represents the default deploy branch. You can also update the default deploy branch globally as follows. It's important to mention that if the branch names don't match, Doku won't deploy your app. For example, if you have a branch name here and another branch set up in Doku, your deployment will fail. You likely get an error like this one. Going forward, you also need to set up SSH authentication for GitHub Actions to be able to deploy your app just like you did for your personal machine previously. So let's generate the SSH keys as follows. Now that the SSH keys are created, we need to copy them because we'll need to add them to GitHub Actions. Once you copy your SSH keys, you need to go to the following URL. Obviously, you need to replace my repo name learn platform with your repo name. Then navigate to the secrets and variables sections and click on actions. On this page, you need to create three secrets. First of all, you have the Doku app name, which is the name of your application, the one you created on Doku. The Doku IP, which is the IP of your Hetzner VPS. And lastly, you have the SSH Doku private key, which is the key you copied previously. In my case, I already have them set up, so I won't change anything. And the last step so your GitHub Actions work is to add the public key to your Doku server as follows. Once you run this command, you can deploy your app automatically with GitHub Actions. 
in my case I'm not going to run this command because I already have it set up and I don't want to mess the configuration. It's important to mention that if you added a passphrase for this key you might need to do some extra steps. From now on, every time you push to the main branch or whatever name you chose for your branch, it will trigger a deployment. To show an example, let's push an empty commit. As you can see, it triggered a deployment. As you can see, the deployment finished and you can see your changes live in the deployed app. Congrats, you now have Doku on your VPS which you can use to self-host your apps. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.